Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Let's jump into what may be my finest race of 2023. It was a 12 lap race around Watkins Glen in Group 3 cars. I've gone for the Nissan GTR 2018. Starting towards the back of the pack on the Scott Chegg account. Scott Speed is back in the building. Now let's go in towards Turn 1. Obviously with the rolling start everyone fairly spread out, not really much in the way of overtaking. But I can assure you there will be plenty of overtakes, lots of aggressive moves being made throughout the course of this one. So let's jump in through the S's onto the back straight. This is really the hot point for overtaking on this circuit as we head in towards the bus stop chicane. I'm going to look up the inside of the Aston Martin and thankfully space is afforded, no contact is made and the position is gained up into P12 through the outer loop trying to get a good exit here looking at the back of the Renault in front and we're going to get a nice run on that car move up the inside and move into 11th place now you might notice a white and red and black Toyota Supra a couple of cars behind and that is a car I want you to watch out for in this video on the left hand side of the screen where the names are who will appear as Grove Street, a very quick American driver who gave me a very good battle. Up behind the Porsche here, looking up the inside, later on the brakes, head towards the apex, get the overtake done. That's three solid overtakes on the first lap. We got one on the start line as well. Someone was slowing down to go to the back of the pack. So four actual overtakes, I suppose. And I just want to give a shout out, right? To all of those guys who are watching this video with the sole intention of falling asleep as uh, it has come to my attention that this is actually a fair portion of the audience and I in no way take that as an insult I actually find it very wholesome you know that um, my voice is some way quite nice to listen to um, I can only take that as a compliment and hopefully by the end of this video, this 22 minute video, you'll be asleep. But um, it looked like the two guys there were falling asleep as they forgot to get on the accelerator on the exit of turn one. And we've got the double move done up into P8. That Supra is easily the quickest car on that, on that back straight. But uh, I don't know what that guy was doing. Someone else uh, there, I don't know what he was doing, having a perpendicular meeting with a barrier it seems which is far from the optimal strategy that's me up into seventh place scott chegg is not hanging about up behind the bmw now can we get a move done this is a really difficult corner in this car under the new physics it's like the car constantly wants to understeer on the way in then oversteer on the way out we had the car under control there looking for another move into the heel corner hit up the inside we go the bmw is actually going to hold this one around the outside quite nicely bit of contact there but he's got the line he's got the inside and he's going to keep his position good little battle between the two of us We're going to try and perform a nice little switcheroo here on the exit and we've got half a car alongside into the apex we go he backs out and that is p6 beautiful stuff that was a really nice little move there good little battle between the two of us good respect and it's always good you know in Gran Turismo when you can just jump online have a good battle and have a good respectful fight with another driver or multiple drivers so now we turn our attention to P5 trying to get a good exit here out of turn number one the exit there determines your speed all the way up the hill through the S's and along the back straight towards the bus stop therefore it's probably the most crucial exit on the entire lap not quite close enough to think about a move here i mean a move from here would be move of the millennium if i were to pull that off but not quite on this occasion getting a little bit closer carrying good speed through the bus stop pulling ever closer towards a rapid turtle v2 i'd love to have seen rapid turtle v1 shame i missed it down the hill we go into the long left trying to get on the power as early as possible maximizing the curb that's a bit too early running slightly wide onto the grass on the exit but it's not going to hamper our progress too much and again here trying to get on that power nice and early 
making the most of the camber on the exit and the extra track width there. As we head back towards the heel corner, looking for that 200 board on the left, that's a good reference breaking point for that corner. As we come through, we're going to have to be a bit more patient now. So this, this race has definitely settled down. Lap 1 and 2, of course, people a little bit all over the place. By the time you get a couple of laps into each race, everyone's kind of settled into their position, got into a bit of a rhythm with their laps, and it's going to be a little bit harder to overtake from here on. So let's see what we can do. We're definitely a lot closer on this lap compared to the previous one. BMW about six tenths behind, not quite uh, close enough to go for a move on me. So we're really trying to move forward here rather than going backwards. This could be overtake potential here. Three tenths behind as we head into the S's on lap number four. The tyres not really going off just yet. The tyre wear wasn't too bad at the opening phase of this race. The uh, rapid turtle there going to the inside. We're going to fight this one around the outside. We're going to try it. And to be fair, <laughs> done a good job. It shouldn't have worked really. I, I would have thought the rapid turtle would have uh, tried to fight that one. Car off in the background. That's the BMW doing a nice little pirouette in the back of shot. And I'm up into fifth position. Grove Street in P7 lurking ominously behind. So I'm making quite fast judgments here. Some good laps, some quick, decisive overtakes. But so is Grove Street, and he's not going to leave me any moments to rest in this one. A little bit wide there. The car snapping midway through the corner, having to gather it up midway through and go again. So into P5. Um, summary of the race so far is fast, decisive overtakes. Been pretty good. Um, but now it's just going to be a little bit a bit more tricky to catch up with these positions in front as the gaps have definitely opened up. The leader now 8 seconds in the lead. So quite a, quite a big distance between myself and the leader. But that normally happens when you start towards the back. So through the final corner, lap number 4. So quite a close little battle here for P4 as we cross the line to start lap 5. Looking towards that 200 board, breaking just before it, in towards the first corner. On the power by the time you get to the apex, really got to carry that speed through. Maximise the track limits, keeping two wheels on the red and yellow kerb. And the stewards will not say anything about that. So now trying to tuck into the slipstream, as we mentioned, the Supra is extremely quick in a straight line. And I'm barely keeping up with it, fully now in the slipstream. I'm not really close enough to go for this move. We're going to have to settle in behind. That super is extremely fast, but I do sense that through the longer corners, which we're getting to now, the Nissan GTR here does just slightly have the edge compared to that car. And so we can try to fight and overtake somewhere away from that main straight. It's very difficult to overtake the Supra if you're not in the Supra. Let's see what we can do about that. On the 200 board, breaking into this corner is quite a good reference in general around a lot of the corners on this track. The 200 board does tend to be the right place to break. Fully in the slipstream, again, are we close enough? It's, uh, it's one of those where you've got to have a, have a look and we actually just fully send it. Scott Speed, not messing about today, not taking any prisoners. Um, just going fl uh, flying up the inside, getting the job done. And that is fourth position. Gap to uh, P3 now is 2.7 seconds so it's going to take a couple of laps of consistency to uh, catch up that kind of gap uh, let's see what this lap time is going to be we did have to pull off an overtake there so it should be it's actually quite a good lap 46.5 it's my fastest lap of the race so far so i think the slipstream down the back straight behind the super certainly assisted me on that lap actually so quite a big gap now to third and as i say this is that phase of the race where you just got to churn out some fast and consistent laps. And sometimes that bit, that can be quite tricky. It is certainly something to be said in motorsport that having a direct reference in front of you can make you go a little bit quicker. When there's no one in front of you to really gain on. It can be quite hard. Uh, so the car in front, obviously visible in the distance. A couple of pixels up there. But not particularly close enough for me to really get much of a reference. 
but we do have a target we do have someone to aim for and to try to gain on and this lap so far has been fairly solid maximize track limits once again it looks like a penalty i don't know if you spotted that a penalty for the guy in second place so this could come to my aid here as let's see what that gap goes down to between third and second it's the guy in second on the right hand side ahead he's actually going to pull in behind so that could be good news for me these two guys now perhaps are going to start fighting and that will just draw me ever so slightly closer we're coming up to halfway into this race and things are looking up made really good progress so far very happy with it it's got speed uh, you know always happy to be behind the wheel and doing business as it, as ever so through the final corner this rounds out the first half of the race can we have a very good second after the race let's see another 46 5 so very good consistency being shown here let's try and pull off another one actually there's a penalty for third place once again so that's two penalties in a row look like a 0.5 so I'm going to try and draw as close as I can uh, by the time they serve a 0.5 I don't think I'm going to get past not at this rate I'm not close enough but if I can just gain a couple of tenths and I'll certainly at least be in the slipstream so we're just building towards as many uh, positive advance advancements as possible in this race we're just trying to latch onto the next slipstream which will pull us along and then go for the next overtake Grove Street behind two seconds and it's probably worthwhile having a look at his YouTube channel. He actually records videos and uh, more often does live streams. So definitely someone that you should have a look at if you get a spare moment. Of course, once you've watched the entirety of this video. But yeah, have a look at Grove Street. Good channel and a very quick guy as well. So down the back straight here, you see the Supra got back in front of the Nissan, but then loses it once again. So these two really just... Um, Losing a bit of time fighting each other slightly, uh, and that's certainly now got me within slipstream range. So this is looking very positive indeed. 8.7, the gap to the leader, the Canadian, in the Mercedes out front, which I actually think is a French guy on his second account. But there you go. Now let's have a look through the final corner. Lap number seven, firmly now in the slipstream. Second and third are going to move over to the right-hand side, trying to break the toe. I'm just going to stay to the left and spot my braking marker board in turn, into turn number one. Lap number seven was a 46.8. Tyres beginning to go off slightly. You can see the front left with about 55% of life remaining. So this race was really tough on that front left tyre. Lots of long right-handers at front left, crying in pain and dying of death towards the 12th 12 laps into the bus stop lap number eight took uh, not enough curb really on the first apex there kind of compromised me on the on the second and third part of that corner now trying to pull up very close towards cobby in the supra gonna look for this move not quite going to happen here can we get a good exit though and perhaps go into the hairpin very very close indeed I'm not going to think about it here. Not quite close enough, I don't think. I want to make this move right. The last thing you want to do is go for a move and do it so badly that you end up losing three seconds doing it. So we need to make sure this is a decisive and clean overtake. Am I close enough here? Not quite. I made a move like that work earlier against another Supra. But like I just said, as you get towards the front, it gets a little bit harder to to make a more decisive move against a faster player so we've got to make sure we time this to perfection i don't want to lose time to second who is now actually beginning to pull away slightly and let's not forget about the slipstream as well so copy here actually having a bit of a poor run out the penultimate corner goes defensive into the final corner that's just losing his time look at the gap now to second they're just pulling away i'm just erring this guy on i'm willing to sit behind and we can work together to pull back into that slipstream that's exactly what we're going to do here. Sat behind the Supra. This is the best place to be on this back straight. Right in the slipstream of the fastest car on the track. So let's go and try to pull this gap back to that GTR in second place. And at the same time, trying to pull away 
from the ominous and ever-present Supra behind. We need to keep a safe buffer to that Supra behind, just in case they get close. It's going to be really dif difficult to defend against such a car, should the opportunity arise for him to go for a move. And the uh, copy there goes really wide, and that gives me a free pass to go up the inside and move up to P3, onto the podium now. But we can go one better, we can go up into, into second place. First place is going to be um, long gone, so that's going to be pretty much an impossibility. But we can definitely go for P2, which would be a mighty fine result, starting from 15th on the grid. So here we go then, towards the heel corner, looking again for that 200 board. Just really trying to churn out nice, consistent laps on that power nicely. And let's try to be nice and gentle on the brakes as we have a bit of an oversteer moment on the kerb. And uh, I did mention this in my previous video, but just trying to be nice and light on the pedal, on the brake pedal that is, really does help with overall tyre wear and just minimising the understeer. Understeer is actually fairly prevalent now under the physics added in 1.31 update so you do have to be fairly soft and delicate on that pedal let's move across and follow this guy in the slipstream as much as possible potential overtaking opportunity into the bus stop if i can get a first corner correct and get a good run through here the gap is a good gap three tenths as we leave the first corner this could get very spicy indeed as we head onto the brakes into the bus stop lap number 10 through the s as we go up the hill then it levels out at the top this is going to be very very close indeed he's going to cover the inside move to the right hand side i'm going to move to the left can we pull this off around the outside on the brakes we did it earlier in the race have to avoid that penalty make sure we don't cut the second apex too much but thankfully we've managed it up into second place another decisive well-timed overtake and that seemed to be the theme of this race everything was falling my way and um, no, no, nothing in the way of penalties, real obvious errors. There were a couple of little mistakes, but nothing, nothing massive, nothing um, that was really going to hamper my progress. And that just shows you sometimes that's what you need. You just need to be clean and decisive. Um, and I think in this race, the balance was just perfect. It, you know, everything was was coming together, and it really feels good when you get in the in in the right groove. Uh, you're, you're comfortable with the car, the car feels good, uh, the engineer's back at home doing a fantastic job as ever, uh, back at the Nissan factory, producing such an amazing piece of equipment here, but then at the same time you've got to make those fi uh, fast and decisive overtakes when the opportunities arise and thankfully on this occasion that's exactly what happened. There, there were a couple of times there where a couple of passes, you know, they could have easily gone wrong, could have got a penalty, could have gone one pixel the wrong side of the track limit and it would have completely hampered my progress but here this kind of just shows you what it looks like just uh, finally string it all together now i'm trying to break the toe here the guy behind has a penalty so this is quite an important lap just trying to make sure we don't get re-overtaken and lose time i'm still very conscious of grove street there in p4 who is drawing ever closer especially towards the final lap as we will be coming up to after this one um we just make want to make sure that Grove Street does not have a clear run on that back straight. If that Supra gets anywhere near me on the exit of turn one, then it's pretty much game over. I'm not going to be able to defend. That car has far too much top, top end speed compared to the Nissan, the Nissan GTR that I'm driving. So this lap still needs to be perfect. I still need to drive this one as good as possible. Front left tyre really struggling now. Lots of understeer, massive lack of grip. But we still have to drive flat out and make sure we can pull away and keep that gap. Let's see how this gap is going to change here as uh, second place, oh, sorry, third place is going to serve that penalty. There it goes, Grove Street now through to P3 and it's a clear two-way battle for second. It's been a really good race between the two of us. I know we've never, we, we've never at one point during this whole race actually really made any contact. We've not actually directly battled in a sense. But sometimes you have races like that where you are fighting someone with without actually ever being that close to them. It's kind of a, a weird dynamic. But this one, this is about as close as we have been, I would say. The gap coming down to just one second. And I think I should be safe. 
as we head in towards the first corner, I think I need at least 0.6 to be safe in towards the bus stop. And we have 1.1 of a gap, so this should be okay, at least for the time being. Um, this is easily the best overtaking chance for the Supra, but there will be other opportunities on the lap. Uh, so I'm going to be safe here. The gap comes down to, uh, to 0.9 from 1.1. So the Supra, I would say, gains about three tenths of a second on that straight alone with its superior uh, power. But we're safe for the time being. Uh, two thirds of a lap remaining. So this isn't over just yet. There's still always a chance. And therefore, you have to still be very mindful of driving quickly, but at the same time, not getting a crucial penalty. If I were to pick up a 0.5 second penalty now, that would certainly change the result. And so I have to be so, so careful and uh, that really is the the main skill I think in this race, or you know, in motorsport in general, just deciding the balance to uh, to drive to. Do we push too much? You know, really go for it, but then you risk getting the penalty and making the mistake. Uh, in this race, I think I turn that switch to exactly the right position, not too much, not too little, driving to a very nice balance. And here thinks uh, Grove Street was just pushing a little bit too hard and you'll see the gap at the top left of the screen it goes from 1.1 and it climbs up quite quick uh, quickly to about two seconds um, he, ma he made a mistake on the exit of that corner just pushing perhaps a little bit too hard but um, it was a really really good battle between the two of us and I think it was one of my finest races this year to go from 15th up into second lots of um, good overtakes lots of uh, clean racing and a good battle there against Grove Street so I really hope you enjoy this one hopefully you're asleep by now for those watching for ASMR purposes but either way have an amazing day and I'll catch you next time goodbye